Welcome, 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 welcome to Rock Kids. Thanks for joining us today. We are so glad you decided to take some time out of your very busy schedules to join us for Rock Kids. Today we are learning about the armor of God, but before we do, we're going to worship God. Everyone stand up and let's hear you sing. fantastic awesome. it's great to see you up in your feet and moving around now let's sing made for this made for this i was made for this i live for this god has a reason reason for my life i'm gonna shout it out without a doubt Me. He was with me, he 
fantastic. Never forget that, that you were built for a purpose. You're not here by accident. You're definitely mm -hmm. not a mistake. But God has a That's reason right. for you to be here. He has a reason for you. And uh, we always have to remind each other of we that. Do. There's no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. Well, let's sing together, Light of the World. All right, wasn't that awesome? Worshiping God, being able to think about how great He is and how powerful and how much He loves us and how much we love Him. Well, today we are talking about the armor of God. And last week, Pastor Julia talked about the armor of God as well. So if you watched last week's video, I have a couple questions for you to see if you remember what it was about. So my first question is, what do we as Christians have to put on daily? Hmm, what do we have to put on? That's right, the armor of God. All right, second question. What does the armor of God defend us from? Hmm, what does it defend us from? Evil, right? It defends us from evil and lies, and we'll get all into that today. And number three, why is the armor of God so important for us as Christians? Well, hmm, why is it important to put on armor? It protects us and it also helps us so that we can go and share Jesus with everybody. All right, so I'm going to read you part of the Bible. We're going to go to Ephesians 6 verses 10 to 18, okay? And I'm using the NIRV version today, um, the reader's version that lots of kids at Rock Kids use. So here we go. Finally, let the Lord make you strong. Depend on his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor 
then you can remain strong against the devil's evil plans. Our fight is not against humans. It is against the rulers and the authorities and the powers of this dark world. It is against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly world. And so put on all of God's armor. Evil days will come, but you will be able to stand up to anything and after you have done everything you can, you will still be standing. So remain strong in the faith. Put on the belt of truth. Woo! We're going to stop there because guess what? We're going to learn about what the belt of truth is today. So first I want you to check out this video. Put on the armor of God. Go. Put on the armor of God. Go. Level one. Put on the armor of God. Go. Level one. Put on the armor of God. Put on the armor of God. God. Level one. Put on the armor of God. Select your armor. Breastplate plate of righteousness. Helmet of salvation. Shield of faith. Sword of the spirit. Shoes of the gospel of peace. Sword of shield. Helmet of breastplate. Belt of truth. Breastplate plate of righteousness. Helmet of salvation. Shield of faith. Sword of the Spirit. Shoes of the Gospel of Peace. Level 1. All right, that video was fantastic. It showed me how important it is to put on armor because without it, we're not going to be able to make it all the way to the end and get to the castle and raise the flag, okay? So we're going to focus on the belt of truth. So that's found in Ephesians 6, 14. And we're going to break it down a little bit at a time so we fully understand what the belt of truth means. But before we do that, we really need to recognize that there is a battle that we go through as Christians. There is a good side and an evil side. And the battle happens in the spirit world, which we can't see with our normal eyes. But it still happens and we need to be ready for it. So what the cool thing is, remember from last week, God's armor fits every size Christian, no matter if you're little or tall or young or old. And God's armor is mighty, so we don't have to worry because we will be protected from evil. All right, so Ephesians 6.14 says, So remain strong in the faith. Let's think about that for a second. What does that mean, remain strong in the faith? 
Well, that tells us that how we should stand. We should stand strong in the Lord and have faith in Him. That's what that's telling us. We need to have faith in God. Now, the second part says, put on the belt of truth. Okay, so put on. That's, you know, pretty simple. Put something on. If you think about it, when you're getting dressed in the morning, who here wears a belt? Anyone? I don't usually, but sometimes I do. So when you put your belt on, it takes some effort, right? You got to loop it through all the loops. You got to buckle it up and it holds your clothes up, right? Well, putting on the belt of truth means that sometimes we have to put effort into knowing the truth. The truth just doesn't appear. We have to study it and seek it out and look for it, okay? Wouldn't that be cool if we had a superpower that we could absorb all the truth in the world and we would know everything right at once? Well, life doesn't work that way and we actually have to put some effort in to know the truth. All right, so put on means we got to put some effort in. And then the belt. So let's think about a belt, okay? It's in the center of your body, right? It goes around your waist. It holds clothes up, thankfully. <laughs> and um, a lot of cool things can attach to it, like a sword or a shield around your chest area. Your pants might all be held up with it, everything. So you can attach weapons tools, lots of things. So it's really important, a very important piece. In fact, it's kind of like the first thing God tells us to put on. So it's, it's a foundation. It's kind of the truth of, of who Jesus is and what he did for our lives is foundational. It helps stabilize us and it's what we can build our lives on. All right, so another cool thing about the belt is that when the book, the Bible was written, there was a time when there were um, warriors and these warriors, a lot of them were Roman soldiers and they wore a special belt and only Roman soldiers could wear them. And it was a sign that you were a warrior. So the belt symbolized that you were ready to fight. You were always ready to fight and you were a warrior. The next thing, and I didn't even think about this, but the belt that Roman warriors used to wear protects an area of our bodies that represents the future generation. So what's cool is that us knowing the truth and standing and firm and believing in the truth not only protects us, but it protects future generations so we can share the truth with them. And then they can share the truth with the next generation. Isn't that cool? Who knew a belt would be so symbolic? All right, so... The verse says, remember, put on the belt, which we just talked about, of truth. Now, in our world, there is truth and then everything else is not true. Okay, that's how it works. And in the Bible, in John um, 14, 6, Jesus himself, Jesus himself calls himself the truth. He says, I am the way and the truth. So if Jesus is the truth, then we know all other things are not true. All right, so we need to know God's truth about what Jesus did for us, who he really is, and what this world is really all about. John 8, 31 and 32 says, those who believe in him, so he's talking to the people who believe in Jesus, if you obey my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, right? If you know Jesus and you know he's true, you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. So that means if you know the truth, you're set free. But if you don't know the truth, you're trapped. And that's what sin does. It traps us. So um, the truth makes us free, but lies trap us. I'm going to give you a little example. So Satan may, Satan is the enemy and he may try to give you thoughts that are not from God, but are from him. And someday he may drop this little thought in your mind and say, mm, you're only small and young, so you can't expect God to use you very much. So it may be true that you are small and young, 
but it is not true that God might only be able to use you a little because you are mighty, especially with the armor of God and with Jesus in you. So knowing the truth and surrounding yourself with truth, because remember, the belt goes around your waist, it helps you to know when things are not true. Because if you know the truth, then you know when you hear the, a lie, right? So if you go to school and you hear someone say something, or maybe you learn something, and you know, hmm, that's not true because in the Bible, it says something different. So you'll be able to tell what is true and what is a lie. So the really cool thing about this is the truth is in the Bible, which is amazing to me because I am fully convinced that the Bible is true. There is tons of archaeological evidence, and that's just a big fancy word for really smart people who love looking into the history of the world. And there's so much evidence that says what happened in the Bible happened in real life. So there's archaeological evidence. But not only that, do you know what's even cooler? Is that the Bible is written by about 40 different people. And it was written over 1,500 years. What? We only live for like 80 to 100 years, maybe if we're blessed. But it says that the Bible was written over 1,500 years. That's a really long time. And it's all written in the same point of view. And all 66 books of the Bible all weave together. And there's so many connections from the beginning of the Bible in Genesis to the middle to the end in Revelations. It's all connected. It's kind of like one person wrote it, which they did. God's words inspired everything that everyone wrote down, those 40 authors. And that is how I know that the Bible is true and what it says is true. And that's what I believe. So when I'm looking for truth, I look into the Word of God because the stuff in there is what God wanted me to know about Him. So I have this interesting object lesson for you all to watch. So here I have two jugs. They're both filled with water and I have two oranges. Two oranges. And they both have the peel still on them, right? So we're going to pretend that the peel is the belt of truth, okay? So both oranges have the belt of truth on them and when they face lies, the water is going to represent lies. When they face the lies of the world and the lies that Satan wants us to believe and to not believe in Jesus, we're protected. We float. We, aren't, we are unaffected. Whoa. We're unaffected by the lies of the world. But when we remove the peel, and this might take a bit of time, when we take, when we don't know the truth, when we don't read our Bibles, when we hear stuff at school and we start to believe it without asking God, is that true? Or without looking um, for it in the Bible and being like, oh, that is true or that's not. Then we've taken off the belt of truth. We don't know what's true anymore and what's not. And then look what happens. <gasps> we sink to the bottom. The lies trap us. We get trapped by the lies and we are affected by the lies. So it's better to have the belt of truth on and to not be affected by the things in this world that are not true than to take it off and then get kind of tricked and trapped by the things in this world that were never meant for us to believe. All right, boys and girls, thank you so much for joining us. We hope you learned a ton about the belt of truth. Remember, you can find out the truth in the Word of God. It's all in there. He wrote it, and he wants you to read it so you know what's in there. All right. See you next week.